Hi y'all, thanks so much for joining me in this video today where I'm hoping to talk to you a bit about the pelvic floor contraction or what you might know as the Kegel. Just off the bat, I'm gonna make a clarification about the word Kegel. I don't love it. I'm gonna try not to use it. Dr. Kegel was the first physician who did some research about these muscles, and for some reason, we call the contraction that after him. It's not really like that in other places in the body. If you were doing a bicep curl or a bicep contraction, you would call it that because that's the muscle that's contracting. I'm gonna hold the same for the pelvic floor. We're gonna talk about a pelvic floor contraction because those are the muscles that are contracting. So I just wanted to get that clear. Next, we need to think a little bit about, you know, where the pelvis sits in the body. So your pelvis, and I have my trusty model here, is the bottom of what I call the core canister. And we'll talk more about that anatomy in another video. The pelvis doesn't exist in isolation. It's connected to many other things in the body, and that's really important to consider. But we're gonna hone and focus in on the pelvis itself today. So if we take a peek at this lovely model, you can see some bony anatomy. We're gonna talk about the bones first. So if you see this big bony ridge on either side of the pelvis, these big wing bones are called your iliac crests. If you were to put your hands on your hips, you wouldn't be putting your hands on your hips at all. You'd be putting them on these iliac crests and therefore your hands are actually on your pelvis. The wing bones come and wrap around and they meet in the middle with this line of cartilage at the pubic symphysis joint common place for pain in pregnancy. If we turn the bones around and we look at the back, you can see the wings come together and they meet the triangle bone here at the base of the spine known as the sacrum. At the bottom of the sacrum we have another wee little bone called the coccyx or the tailbone. And um, both the sacrum and the coccyx move a lot in pregnancy, or not in pregnancy, in birth. They're the bones that move the most. So generally, outside of pregnancy and birth, these joints don't have a ton of movement, but during birth itself, they can. Now we're gonna talk about the muscles. So some of you may have heard the pelvic floor described, in addition to being the bottom of your bottom, as this group of muscles that's a sling or a hammock that's holding the whole bottom of your bottom together. Now, although we might say sling or hammock, I don't want you to think that these muscles are droopy. They're not hanging down there. They're elastic, they're dynamic, they're more like a trampoline. And the anatomy of this area is quite complex, but we're gonna try to simplify it a little bit for the sake of our understanding and how to connect to these muscles for your contraction. So if we start looking in the back, all of the pelvic floor muscles, or most of the pelvic floor muscles, many of the pelvic floor muscles, come and they attach to the bottom of that sacrum and the coccyx, they kind of anchor in there. From there, they go wide to either of your sit bones or your ischial tuberosities, those, those big large bones that you sit on when you're sitting up tall in a chair. From there, they wrap around and come all the way up to the pubic bone in the front. Now, if we flip this over and we get a little more personal with the bottom of the bottom and where all the action is, we're gonna talk about these muscles today sort of in two groups, okay? Again, simplification of the anatomy, but that's good for the use that we're talking about today. In the bottom and in the back, you can see this deep group of muscles running underneath, kind of from that sacrum tailbone all the way up to the pubic bone. And then you can see this somewhat triangularly shaped group of superficial muscles on top. So I tend to refer to the pelvic floor muscles as deep or superficial. What I want you to notice is that both groups of muscles sling around the anal opening as well as around the vaginal opening and the urethra. Going forward, to me, a good pelvic floor contraction has two qualities, and this sort of running around the openings is an important one to consider. Why? The first quality of a good pelvic floor contraction is that there should be some squeeze around these openings, okay? There should be a squeeze happening around that anal sphincter when you do a pelvic floor contraction. In the back, this is what I call that anal wink when you try to stop a fart, okay? Additionally though, there should be some closure and squeeze around the vaginal openings, not entirely. The, vagina, or the vaginal opening is not a sphincter. You're not gonna get complete closure there. But we should also have squeeze or winking up at the urethral opening as well. And that is a sphincter, right? We wanna be able to close that off, especially in times of laugh, cough, sneeze, jump, okay? So good pelvic floor contraction has got some closure, some squeeze around these openings. Really commonly, after birth, after having babies, that sensation of closure is 
what words do I want to choose here? It's common to feel it more often in the back or posteriorly. As in when you do your Kegel, you can feel that anal wink. Sometimes it's more difficult to feel the winking up in the front, but a good pelvic floor contraction has winking closure in the back and in the front anteriorly. In addition to that closure or winking, this whole sling hammock elastic trampoline also needs to lift up inside, okay? That lift is really important for supporting our organs, for getting enough anterior contraction to clamp off that urethra so that we don't have urinary incontinence or leakage. And again, sometimes that lift is not as easy to feel after we've had babies. So again, we need two good things about our pelvic floor contraction, squeezes and lifts. I'm hoping that some tips I'm going to give you in the next video segments are going to help you connect to these muscles and help you figure out, you know, how things are feeling in the back, how things are feeling in the front and getting more of a sense. I'm going to play with different cues. Um, we're going to do different visualizations just to help facilitate that brain to muscle connection especially when it comes to pregnancy and birth. There's just so much change that happens with the pelvic floor and your core muscles, okay? Your brain's job is to always be sensing where different parts of your body are in space. But there's a lot of adaptation that goes on within the pelvic floor during those processes. As a result, after birth, and there's this substantial change again, once baby's no longer in the body, the brain needs time to reconnect and readapt and make that clear pathway from the brain to the muscles. Sometimes those connections aren't always so clear and that can persist often for years. So it doesn't matter how old you are and honestly it doesn't matter if you've had a baby or not either because it's always a good exercise to try to connect more with our body and clean off those connections between the brain and the muscles. So that's what we'll be talking more about in the next segment.